Hey everyone, my name is Lexi and I'm a network engineer. I've encountered a lot of people who don't know what network engineering is or what a network engineer does. So the purpose of this video is for me to just give you a basic overview of exactly that. What is network engineering or networking? What does a network engineer do for a living? So let's start with what is network engineering? Basically, it's how anything electronic talks to anything else electronic. It's that simple. A network is defined as two or more computers that are linked together to share resources, files, or messages. You might recognize some of the symbols down here. I have four of the most common methods to connect networks together. This represents Ethernet, which is probably the most common networking protocol that we use to connect networks today. You may have seen an ethernet cable like in the back of your PC that connects to your home router or something. And if you unplug it or it accidentally comes unplugged, it means you don't have internet. That's your ethernet cable. These cables have copper wires inside of them and data is passed through by sending electronic pulses along those copper wires. This next symbol is probably pretty familiar to you as well. It's the symbol for wireless internet or Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi sends data instead of over copper cabling, over radio waves. Satellites do the same thing. They send data over radio waves as well, but they're just higher up in the sky. This can be beneficial for people who are living in rural areas where it's not that easy to build out the infrastructure that we might need for traditional network cabling. And lastly, we have fiber optic cabling. We can also run ethernet over this. However, it's built differently than our traditional copper ethernet cabling, where we have copper inside and we're sending electrical pulses over the copper. Instead, with fiber optics, we have these tiny pieces of glass inside that are about the width of one single hair. They're very small. And to send data, we actually send tiny little beams of light over the glass. Some examples of networks that we encounter in our day-to-day -day life. The internet, for example, is one giant network. The internet is the network to end all networks. It is everyone's individual network connected in one gigantic global network. It's how your computer at home gets you to the internet. You have your own local area network at home where you have all your individual little devices talking to each other. And to get to the internet, they talk to your router that your internet service provider provides to you when you move into a new place and you open an account with them. When you're printing something from your laptop, the laptop talks to the printer and tells it to print something out and boom, that's talking over a network. You can see TikTok videos on your phone because you click on the app on your phone and it starts a connection over the internet to the application TikTok. It's reaching out over the internet to where TikTok's data is kept much farther away from where you are. And that's made possible again by the internet. Inside your car, you actually have a lot of little computers in there that work together to make the car function as it should. Any car built after 2010 will probably have a lot of electronics in it and they all function together instead of independently. They function as one unit. It's similar with rockets. Inside of a rocket ship, you have a lot of different computers, a lot of different antennas, devices, things like that, that need to talk to each other. You have a local vehicle network on the launch vehicle, the rocket itself. And lastly, I know we've all heard about hacking. With traditional hacking, like we're talking about somebody hunched over in a hoodie, you know, on their computer, typing something, hacking into somebody's website, attacking someone, stealing resources, things like that. If you're doing it remotely, if the hacker is hacking remotely, then they have to be using a network. Network engineering skills are absolutely critical to being a good hacker or on the reverse end, white hat hacker or infosec professional, cybersecurity professional. So as far as networking equipment goes, you've probably heard of a router. You may have heard of a switch. But there are a lot of other networking devices that network engineers work with and maintain and configure. Some of those are firewalls, modems, servers, load balancers, and hubs. But we're not going to get into those devices today. We're just going to talk about routers and switches and what they are in general. So what is a router? We call a router the gateway of the network because it will guide packets and network data throughout your home network, but it can also 
send that data outside of the network. So it's the gateway for your network in and out. A router guides your network data by wrapping it in these different layers of information, and it sends that information to other computers and electronics, either nearby, at home, or far away over the internet. It connects you to the internet, essentially. If you've ever heard of or seen an IP address, that's the information that routers use to send information to the correct place. So I have an example here, 192.168.254.1. An IP address is four different sections with numbers only, and they're connected by a dot. A switch is very similar to a router, but it only sends information to computers and electronics close by, or as we call it, on the same network. It separates your local ne network into smaller pieces that are easier to manage. If you've ever heard of a MAC address, uh, that's the information that switch is used to send data to the correct place. So I have an example down here. A MAC address is longer than an IP address and it has letters in it as well as numbers. So as you can see, things are separated by colons. So you have six different little sections of two letters and you can see a colon in between each of them. That's what a MAC address looks like. So a network basically works like the postal service. A switch is sort of like your community mailbox. It can serve a bunch of different devices connected to it or a bunch of different houses use a community mailbox to mail out their packages. Now let's say we have a person located at a house with the address 1234. That is our source IP address and that is essential information to send their package to someone. Just like when you're mailing a package, you need a return address, your address, where it's being sent from, and you need a destination address or who you're sending it to and their address. We also need on the information that we send on the network, a source IP address and a destination IP address. So your laptop or whatever device it is that's connecting to the internet through your router is first going to send that information to your home router or the gateway of your network with your source IP and your destination IP specified. The cable or the radio waves or whatever medium you're using to send your data is like the little postal truck that takes your package and moves it along. It eventually brings it to your router, which is like the post office because the router looks at that packet. It looks at the source IP address and the destination IP address, and it determines where to send that packet, which physical interface, which port on the router does it send it out, and it'll send it based on what it sees in the destination address. It's carried on, so on and so forth. And just like packages in the real world, when you're mailing something far away, the farther away it is, the more distribution centers, the more post offices it goes through to get to its destination. It's just like that with networking. We call them hops. The more routers that are in the path of between your source where you're starting out with your packet and your destination where the packet, the data is supposed to go, the more routers that are in between, we call it the more hops are in between. Eventually it arrives at the destination and we know that because the destination IP address is maintained throughout the entire process, just like when you mail a package. Your return address and the destination address of the person who's receiving it stay on that package the whole time. So what does a network engineer do? I have some women here, network engineers working in a data center or in this middle case, it looks like maybe an industrial something. When you Google pictures of network engineers, you're gonna see a lot like this. You're gonna see people plugging and unplugging cables. You're gonna see people in these big data centers. And that is fairly accurate. Not all network engineers are going to be physically there to plug in and unplug things, but a lot of the time they are. It just depends on what they're doing for their job, who they work for, and what stage of maturity the network that they're maintaining and taking care of is at. Day-to-day -day life, can look anything like going into a data center, plugging in things, screwing things into those server racks and getting things ready, or they could just be sitting at a computer somewhere and logging into those computers, those routers, those switches remotely and managing them like that. It just, again, it just depends on your level of access and what company you're working for. Now, what do I do? I'm an avionics integration engineer. So I work on a rocket called New Glenn at Blue Origin. I 
really am a network engineer, but I work on what we call avionics boxes, which is just a combination of aviation and electronics that gives you avionics, right? The word integration means bringing things together. So I bring together the avionics equipment on the rocket, but I do it from a networking standpoint, which means that I help all of the data on the rocket get where it needs to go and make sure that each box is talking to each other one that it needs to. This way, as I mentioned with the car and before about rockets in general, all of the boxes function not independently, but together in order to create what we're calling a rocket and get it to fulfill its purpose, which is to go up into space and do all sorts of other things and then come back down safely. If you have any questions, if you have any concerns, if you want to know more about network engineering, please do feel free to contact me. I love talking about networking. I'm happy to talk more with you about it. I can provide learning resources. If you're curious about network engineering, I'm very, very happy to encourage anybody who's interested to get into network engineering. I think it's a really, really cool uh, career path and not a lot of people know about it. Network engineers are always going to be needed because we're always going to have networks of some kind passing data back and forth. So you can see my email address up here, my Twitter handle, Track It Pacer, and you can also catch me on Twitch live streaming under the same handle, Track It Pacer. I live stream myself studying. It helps me concentrate, it helps me focus. And I also get to interact a lot of the time with network engineers who come into the chat and teach me things. So if you're interested in seeing what it's like to learn about networking concepts and protocols, you can join me there. I usually stream at 6.30, p.m. Um, U.S. Pacific Standard Time, so whatever time that is locally for you, I'd love to have you join if you're able to. So that's it. That's Networking 101. Please, again, if you have any questions or want to know more, feel free to contact me. Otherwise, thank you so much for allowing me to help you learn today.